Hi students, welcome to this video for Introduction to GIS. This is week 12 in module 6 and this lecture is on geocoding and specifically geocoding using R. So what is geocoding? Well it's like an attribute join of a standalone table to an attribute table of a spatial data set except it can use multiple fields to match records and it can match records that are similar but not the same, known as fuzzy matching we'll get into that. The spatial data set is called the reference layer. So geocoding applications range from anything from 9-11 emergency response to mapping township and range descriptions to finding locations of customers, marketing analysis, mapping distribution of crimes, uh, other things like that. So to match an address to a street, you have to have an address table. Typically, you're going to bring it in in a CSV or Excel form. And then your reference layer is going to be the spatial element. So the reference layer contains information about the streets, names and addresses ranges. Each address is in a table matched to a location on a particular street. And it creates a point layer of addresses. So matching addresses to polygons is something you can also do with geocoding. So instead of your address being matched to a street, it is matched to an actual polygon shapefile. So here again, you can see the table showing the location and its address. And then this is a parcel reference layer being represented. As so I mentioned fuzzy matching. Fuzzy matching is um, when joins and queries are, are based on exact matches, um, geocoding is able to match records where values may be close but not identical. So again, joins and queries, something we've learned about earlier in this course, are based on exact matches. Whereas geocoding um, can find close or similar matches and get them to match. As you can see, there's just a couple differences in the spelling or where the period is and that um, can be kind of in the way but it can still match. So using geocoding to join is another option. Because geocoding relies on scoring candidates rather than exact matching, it can be useful for joining tables lacking a single common field. So if there's not a common field, um, um, you can still make a join happen. So these two tables can't be joined, but they can be matched. And as you can see, they can be matched on the city name attribute. The case doesn't match the cities in two different fields, but they can be matched um, even though one's lowercase, one's full capital can still match. So the requirements of geocoding are a reference layer, which we mentioned, which is the shape file or feature class containing features with attributes for matching. So the spatial aspect, there has to also be an address locator set up for the reference layer with rules and options, which we'll go into a little bit, and a table with addresses, records to be. So address geocoding is when you take addresses to be matched and parse them into separate components like street, name, number, other things like that. Each component is then compared to the same fields in the reference layer, right? So you're trying to find those matches. Candidates are scored based on the closeness of the match. So the similarity to certain attribute names and anything in the 80 to 100 is a, is a very good match because that means most of the attribute features in the table of the spatial component are matching the attribute features in the table with the address. So address components are anything like the prefix direction, the prefix type, the street name, the street type, the suffix direction, or the city state or zip code. And you can see all those highlighted in blue as examples here. Now addresses are parsed in order for them to be matched. And how they are parsed is that it includes converting to uppercase, right? So we have the prefix number, the prefix name, and something like road or street and something like direction. And so these are then split up into the prefix direction, prefix type, number, street, type, suffix direction, right? So they have to be parsed into all of the individual components in order for them, and then in the street names have to be uppercase in order for them to be matched. 
So this is an example of the attribute table of a reference layer. So again, the reference layer is something that's spatially oriented or spatial aspect to it. So like a shapefile or a feature layer. And you can see here 3120 Northland Drive, the point line or polygon features with attributes on which matching will be based. So placing an address is the one of the important parts about making this match. Right, so you can see here that there's an offset, which means that the point doesn't touch the line. Um, and you have 750 metal arc and 725 metal arc, and you have the lower addresses going one way and addresses going up the other way. So the style that we're focusing on is the US street style in this slide. It locates streets and addresses on both sides of the street using a line reference layer. It requires address ranges on both left and right side of the streets. So odd on one side, even on the other. And you can see an example here of the field name and the data type. The US one range style is similar to US streets, but does not consider left or right sides. It requires a single address range for each street. So again, not considering or uh, the left or right sides. One address style matches a single field address to a single pointer polygon, most often used with partial data, like we saw in the shape of these polygons earlier. City state style matches two fields containing a city name and a state name or abbreviation. So must match points or polygons. So this is pretty uh, simple compared to the other types. Another type is the public land survey system coding, which is typically plotted on topographic maps and it's common in many states for recording locations. So you can see this red dot here indicating an address or a location. And the way you would read that is Township 15 South, Range 28 East, Section 6, Northwest Corner of the Northwest Corner, right? So this is the Northwest Corner uh, and this is the Northwest Corner of the Northwest Corner. So each section is divided into quarters. Each quarter section is divided into four more quarters and they're all 40 acres in size. TRS geocoding um, is another for type sample uh, localities in TRS format. This is the calculated key you're seeing here. That's right. So this is like a code and then the townships for um, this is showing townships for Grant County, Oregon uh, to locate geologic samples based on the TRS. That should be TRS, not TSR. Um, and now I'm going to talk to you about setting up an address locator. So address locators are a matching engine set up for a specific reference layer. So, for example, a style or locator type, U.S. range, city, state, etc. Um, it has to be one of those styles. Uh, it, it will have a name and location of reference data. Those, that's what attributes fields are used for matching. And the default option settings can be changed during geocoding. So locators store a snapshot of the reference data. So just a little kind of snippet and it can be moved from folder to folder. You don't need to copy the reference data with it. If you edit the reference data, you must recreate the locator. So it's just an engine that creates a snapshot that can be used for quickly kind of going through these matches and seeing how they work. Um, online locators are also another option. So ArcGIS Online has several public domain locators. They may not be as accurate as local ones, but provide easy access to large areas. So it kind of expands um, what you can do, um, kind of sacrificing accuracy, but giving you more access. So to set up a locator, you would um, click on a feature, a reference layer, and go to the address locator. And then this is where you can pick um, the locator style. You can add your reference layer and you can select any matching fields you're looking for and then where you can save it. And so geocoding options are where you can really customize this. Um, this is where you can type in um, alternate names in the tables or create alias tables. And these options are really good um, to be, they're really useful during a geocoding session if you need to um, customize it or add alternatives or different things like that. So now we'll get into the geocoding process and we'll be done pretty shortly with this presentation. 
So the geocoding steps are first to add the address locator previously created, choose the address table and set up the session, match the addresses in batch mode, right? So that does the ranking between 0 and 100, anything from 80 to 100 is, is a good match. You review the matched unmatched addresses manually, that way you can catch anything that might be off, look at the ones that have low match ranking, and then from there you change geocoding options to facilitate matching, maybe make the, the engine work better, and then you, at the end, rematch addresses in batch or interactive mode to improve the um, how much matching there is overall. So add, choose, match, review, change. So changing the options to make it fit better, and then rematching it. So starting a session is pretty easy, right? You have, you can see here, this is a text file, so something like CSV or an Excel. And then you choose an address locator to use, and you set up the session. And that's where you can kind of customize the options and change things so that you can rematch and have it be more. And then lastly, you review and rematch. Um, so locator will attempt to match the addresses in batch mode. It will give you this report, which is kind of like a summary of how much matched and unmatched. If everything was matched, you click close. But most likely, there are going to be some mismatches or unmatched addresses, and you can manually change those. So that's the basics of the geocoding process. And this is what the interactive rematch window looks like. Um, so it's, you do as much as you can in the batch mode, and then you can come in here interactively, and you can reduce f f width of fields to see addresses. You can change to unmatched addresses or matched addresses to look them over and kind of get a, a more in-depth summary of how it works. And then looking for candidates. So this is where you find your match type and you select rows that don't have a matched address. And then you have to go through the candidates that might potentially match that. And you can examine the standardization. You can edit problems like, oh, this one's missing a zip code. You can look that up and add it and that might improve the match. And then you have more options here in the bottom left. And then if you find the match, you can hit match. Or if you want to search for candidates for a certain address, you can do that here as well. And when you select options and you're adjusting the geocoding options, you can adjust things like spelling sensitivity, maximum candidate score, minimum match score. And so you kind of can adjust the ranges for what's acceptable in your match engine and other things like that. You can adjust spelling um, sensitivity, uh, so for instance, so that the fuzzy matching um, works a little different. And then you just match the best candidate, the best candidate. So you can, like again, you can kind of look at this. You can get the score and match it. Um, this is kind of low, 70, but if it's the best you can do, it's the best you can do. And then this is an example of what your finished result would look like. So we have our reference layer. We have the points from the attribute table that successfully matched to the reference layer. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for listening to this brief lecture on geocoding. I hope it was useful, and we'll see you next time.